Hi, Lan. Hi, Martin. What are we building today? So I need to automate some admin tasks in Looker, which is Google Cloud's business intelligence and big data analytics platform. I've heard that it can be done with Cloud Functions. That's right, uh, but I have to warn you, I don't know Looker at all. No worries, if you bring your Cloud Function know-how, I will bring my Looker skills. Sounds good, let's do it. So I often need to register Looker user accounts for my coworkers, but sometimes I forget and people get annoyed. So I would like to automate that process. Okay, got it. So my users usually fill out a Google form so their email addresses end up in a Google spreadsheet. Can we build a cloud function so that it reads that spreadsheet nightly and then create Looker user accounts for my coworkers? Yes, we can. Uh, this is actually a pretty common use case for cloud functions. Run on a schedule, read a sheet or some other data source, and take actions based on that data. Sounds like Cloud Functions is a glue code in the cloud. Yes, that's a good, uh, <laughs> good way of putting it. Uh, cloud Functions are great for gluing together other systems. So I look at Cloud Function documentation, and I saw that we can write the functions in Python? Yes, we can. Google Cloud Functions also support Node, Go, Java, .NET, Ruby, and PHP. Good, I know Python pretty well, but how do you read Google Sheet in Python? Uh, here is an example. First, it gets the default credentials, then it creates a service object, then a Sheet API client, and we can call values.get on that Sheet API client and pass in the Sheet ID and range of cells to read. Uh, but now it's my turn to ask you a question. Uh, how do you create Looker accounts from Python? It's pretty simple, actually. So we need to import the Looker SDK like this. We create an SDK object, and then we can call methods on it, like the right user to create a new user account. All right. Uh, so I will go to my project in Google Cloud Console. And here I'll select Cloud Functions. I'll wait for it to be enabled. And then I click here to create a new function. I give the new function a good name, and I'll make sure that require authentication has been selected so that it can't be triggered by just anyone out there on the internet. And when I click Next here, the code editor opens up. Good. Uh, so we can wrap these code fragments in Python functions. Uh, then we just need to tell Google which of these functions is the entry point. That entry point should take a Flask request object as its only input parameter. I think between the two of us, we know enough to write this code. Let's do it. Uh, first, I'll write the imports. Uh, and the first two will be needed to read the Google Sheet. And the next two import the Looker SDK. Then I will write the function that is the entry point. It calls a function that reads the email addresses from a Google Sheet loops over these emails, calls a function that creates a local user account for each of these emails. Very good. Then I will write the function here that reads email addresses from the sheet. It will create a sheet client and call values.get on it and read all the values from the B column. I will open our Google Sheet also and copy the sheet ID from that address and paste it into the sheet ID variable in our code. Then I will write the function that creates user's account in Looker. First, it calls create user on the Looker client. Then it calls create user credentials email to set up new email for these user's credentials. Excellent. And I uh, also put in our requirements txt file. Uh, all right, uh, but Lan, how does Looker know who we are and what Looker project we're adding users to? So Looker will read the base URL, the client ID, and a secret from an ini file. Ah, got it. OK, so we put it in there. And I'll deploy the function by clicking this button. Let's test the function. I'll click here to call it. Ooh, that doesn't look good. Uh, let's check the log. 
Mm, uh, something about permissions? Mm, we never granted access to the spreadsheet, did we? If I click details, it looks like the functions is running as its account. So I copy that, I go to the spreadsheet, I click share, then I grant viewer access to the spreadsheet. Click that test button again. All right, here goes. Uh -huh. Oh, looks like it works. Uh, and the log, oh yeah, the log says here that the accounts were created. But Martin, there's one part you have forgotten about. Uh, didn't we do it all? No, we have not scheduled it to run nightly. Oh, you're right. Uh, let's do that in Cloud Scheduler. Uh, first, I'll copy the URL that triggers this function. Then I'll go to Cloud Scheduler and click this button to schedule a job. I give a little name here. I'll enter zero, zero, star, 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 which means every night at midnight in the Unix cron format. Then I'll set it to your time zone, LAN, uh, Japan, standard time. I will set the target type to HTTP and paste in the URL for our cloud function. And because the function isn't public, I will need to set auth header to OIDC token. I'll pick the default compute account for now. But if we take this to production, we should consider creating a custom service account that has access to trigger cloud functions and nothing more. Yeah, that's the principle of the least privilege. I like that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Let's test it right now so we don't have to wait until tomorrow to see if it works. Ah, good idea. Uh, let's click this Run button and give it a minute. OK, I'll click View Logs. Looks like it ran. And if I remove all these filters here, we see the logs from our Cloud Function too. Great, it's working. Now I can just tell my users to submit their email addresses in my form and Looker accounts will be created for them at midnight. Very good. Thank you everyone for watching. If you have questions for Lan or me about this episode or feedback or ideas for future episodes, please enter them in the comments below. Bye.